it's still morning. I'm not even sure at this point. Yeah, it's still morning. It's not quite 11 yet. So, good morning. It is Saturday. I have to think for what day am I on? Who know? Anyway, um, woke up this morning, got myself going, and I already ate breakfast. Didn't feel like filming beforehand, so I just waited till now. Did my own Bible study reading, but it is, of course, everybody's favorite time to vlog. Bible time! So let's get started, shall we? Since I've already read my Bible time, it is now our Bible time. <laughs> I could say. Alright, Exodus, Exodus chapter 3. Moses in the burning bush. Ooh, this is a good time. I like this part. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of the priest of Midian. He led the flock far in the wilderness and came to Sin Sinai, the mountain of God, where the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement through the though the bush was engulfed in flames that didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses told himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look. God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses. Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them, lead them out of Egypt in their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Priserites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the, peop of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is your, his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name. My name is to remember, to remember for all generations. Now go and call together all the elders of Israel. Tell them the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me, I have been watching closely and see how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from my oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Emirates, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. The elders of Israel accept your message. Then you and the elders must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, the Lord, the God of Hebrews, has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go, and I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. They will give you gifts when, they go, when you go, so you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and find clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. 
You will dress your sons and daughters with these, striping, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. And that is chapter 3. Thank you, Lord, as always, for your living, breathing word. I don't know if you saw me wiping my eyes. I got teary-eyed when I said that one part, I am, or who I am. Anytime um, I ever hear that, it's just like a power surge just goes right through me. Because obviously it's the Holy Spirit and God. It's a mighty name that always comes across in a powerful way. Alright, we're going to continue the collective journey. So we already read chapter 13, so we're doing 14. Your tribe connects you to other tribes. Tribes are generational. The Lord announces the word, and the women who proclaim it is it are a mighty throng. Psalms chapter 68, verse 11. As I previously previously mentioned in the beginning of the book several years ago, I participated in a pre-conference prayer retreat. After the speaker had given a brief devotion, she encouraged the group to find a place to listen to pray and to pray. I found a spot in the back of my back of the room and positioned myself on the floor with my Bible journey and pen. As the music played softly in the background, I closed my eyes to focus my hearing. Within several minutes, I began sensing that God wanted to reveal something significant. I picked up my Bible and journal and turned to Psalms, finding a passage I had not seen before. The Lord announces the word, and the woman who proclaimed it is as a proclaimant are a mighty throng. 68:11. Stunned. I picked up my journal and began to write, God is getting ready to raise up a mighty army of women who are full of the Spirit. Although the revelation of what God showed me that day was significant, the larger revelation would come later as I further studied Psalm 68:11. The meaning of the phrase, the word, in verse 11 is the same meaning that appears in Psalms 19:4. Yet their voice goes out unto all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. The meaning of the words in each scripture is divine utterance. The word or the Lord announces the divine utterance and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. And she puts in parentheses, emphasis, mine. In other words, the women proclaim what they hear from God. The Lord's voice goes out to the ends of the earth by the woman declaring it. In the Old Testament during declarations of victory, women possess the responsibility of celebrating a triumph. Women express their victorious decorations through songs and dance. As the example of this appears in Exodus 15, chapter 15, verses 20 and 21, when Miriam begins to sing, When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters out of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophet Aaron's sister took the tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both the horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Again, Judges 5 features the song of Deborah. In verse 7, Deborah sings, Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose, a mother in Israel. Both passages illustrate the teaching of successful generations. Miriam started singing, and the women and their daughters followed her. As leaders, they stepped up to teach both their community and the generations. Further, Deborah's obedience gave her the title of Mother of Israel. Mother is a generational term, not to sound silly, but a mother has a mother and she has a child. Generations continue through motherhood, growing the tribe. Tribes are a generational connection. Deborah acted as a mother to Israel. Appointed as the judge of Israel, she allowed her femaleness to shine through her leadership. When the battle was won, she made a song decoration. She acted as as a Ezer, a warrior, the help that Israel needed. Tribes speak of the passing of traditions from one generation to 
another. The precedent of women celebrating the victory means that they did not simply celebrate one victory, but successful victories. Such decorations did not come from one large body of women celebrating one specific victory, but multiple women over many generations. They celebrate such successful victory rapidly, one after another and another. By developing a community, a tribe, a successful multi-generational community, you develop the sense that you belong to something bigger than yourself, with the older teaching the younger and the younger teaching the older. Such collaboration remains uniquely feminine. I hate stereotypes, but as I have watched female and male leaders, it seems to be the instinctive preference of women to bring everybody along. Why not use the instinctive preferences of bringing everyone along to your advantage and embrace a growing tribe of unique, wonder-filled, strong women who like to link arms and walk shoulder to shoulder to fulfill God's call on their lives? I remind you of the African proverb, if you want to travel fast, travel alone. If you want to travel far, travel together. Okay, reflective questions. Number one, take some time to retreat and finish my network page, which is in the book, so I can't really help you with that. Um, maybe I can look for it, but anyway. Two, look at the places where you have blanks and pray that God will help you fill those areas. Okay, where is my network page? I think it's in the back. Can't seem to find it. But anyway, um, so that is chapter 14. We'll be in chapter 15 next time. I did some editing last night. I'll be uploading those videos soon. I did, did I upload last night? Oh, I, no, I put Mondays together. And then I also did the, um, one video, which will be going up. It's coming up week. And then I have to edit yesterday's video, and of course later today, tonight, I will do today's video. But anyway, I've been getting into another book. I've been trying to branch out. I need to read more. But um, I'm reading a book by our previous pastor um, about his life and calling. It's called When God Calls. Um, here's a book if you are ever interested. It's a good read so far. I'm on chapter 5. So, I'll probably start reading that some more. I need to work on my dollhouse today. Um, let's see, what else have I gotten into? Oh, I did manage to make some TikToks, which was great because I haven't done that in a while. God's I've been wanting to post more. Um, I've been getting on Instagram and TikTok by, and liking other people's stuff, but I'm like, I haven't had much inspiration or motivation. I was like, okay, let's at least make three. So I made three. And so, yay. That's somewhere. That's progress somewhere. Not that I actually need to make the videos, but I still want to be inspired. I want to be that godly influence like God has placed on my heart to put out there. Not just on YouTube. I also want to put on Instagram and TikTok as well. So, anyway. So, I'm going to do some few things. And I really don't know what to film out else what to film right now. So, I also have to get my kids' church lesson ready. So, I'm going to get some stuff done. And then I'll see you guys whenever I see you. <laughs> yo, 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 it's the evening. Ooh. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, it's almost, what is it? Almost 8.30. Anyway, um, 
yes, I took a nap today, felt better, although I kind of wanted to sleep some more, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Worked on my dollhouse. Woo. Uh, cleaned the bathroom, got my kids' church lesson ready. Kids' church lesson, there we go. I have a list because of my... Um... Made some TikToks. Yay! I didn't do my Instagram. Oh well, I'm not gonna put the peer pressure on myself. Anyway, I, I made some effort on one of my social media apps. Anyway, <laughs> um, got my outfit ready for tomorrow. Also, <laughs> times are changing. We're falling back one hour. Um, of course, Mr. Control Freak in the house has already changed the clocks already. You can imagine who I'm talking about. When I said him. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's a control freak. <laughs> anyway. It's like. Anyway. I don't have to. I don't know. The only clock in my room is on here. And my computer. And it already automatically does it. So. <laughs> you can't change it back. Anyway. I had. We mom fixed um, steak, potato, salad. Said it. Oh, and cheesy bread. Good. Okay. Every time. Steak goes up in my teeth here, and then it goes up in here. This one was so bad, I had to put ore gel on it. I had to floss really well. I got it eventually out. I had to get a pick, because I felt like I didn't get it off, and I got the rest of it out with the pick. And then I had to put ore gel on my tooth and numb it. So that was fun. Not. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really don't know what else to say, because nothing else really happened today. Other than that. Why did Zach, I don't know if you guys heard that, but Zachary's talking in the, um, hallway. I guess mom called them for some odd reason. She does that sometimes, she'll call or text us to get her something. Which is perfectly fine. Especially if you can't, she can't, if we can't hear her yelling or she's in her legs or whatever. But it happens sometimes. Um, this week is, I'm going to be working Monday through Friday. So we'll not be filming until Saturday of next Saturday. <laughs> uh, at least we don't have to wake up. Is early. I don't have to leave the house till like 8 or even the one day. I think it's Wednesday. Or is it Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm waiting like 9.15. So please that's not so bad. <sighs> but anyway. Have anything else to say? Not really. But this week is going to be rough. Pray for me. <laughs> As always keep us in your prayers. I much appreciate it. I love you guys so much. Jesus loves you so much. Keep on smiling. Stay positive. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Well, not I don't well see you. You'll see me next time, but you know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>